Make your preparation a stepping stone to the higher rungs of the final selection list. Test and equip yourself before the final personality test. With the Vision IS Personality Development Program for Civil Services Examination 2023. With takeaways such as DF Analysis Session with senior experts and faculty members. Mock Interview Session with ex-bureaucrats educationists. Interaction with toppers and serving bureaucrats. Performance Evaluation and Feedback At Vision IS, we aim to empower you with guidance for the questions ranging from your interests, current affairs, general knowledge, aptitude to critical thinking, which are instrumental in determining your path ahead. Admissions are open now. Celebrate every win, no matter how small or big. So tap your shoulders and clap for yourself with me for making to the final stage of UPC examination. Clap for yourself. <laughs> nice. So uh, dear students and our respected guests, uh, good afternoon to every one of you. It is with great pleasure and pride I extend warm and hearty welcome to all of you. Vision IAS congratulates for your outstanding achievements in UPC examination. May this personality development session equip you with skills and insights needed to succeed in final stage as well. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our esteemed guest for today's session, Krishna Mohan sir, clap for him. Well, with more than 30 years of rich experience in all aspects and crucial sectors of public administration, as an officer of Indian Administrative Services with multiple core competencies in complete range of sectors and departments such as rural and urban development, infrastructure development, revenue, disaster management, law, social welfare, education, and well, list goes on. If I keep enlisting them, even an hour will be less. Well, going ahead, Sir has been selected by DOPT in collaboration with United Nations Development Program to be part of National Pool of Trainers on Ethics and recognized trainers on e-governance duly certified by National e-governance division under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. Please join me in giving warm welcome to Krishmo Han, sir. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. So it's a great pleasure to be amidst you all uh, to talk about a subject which I'm quite passionate about, and that is how to face an interview and what are the desirable personality traits which are required for an aspirant who has succeeded in the mains. So my heartiest congratulations to all of you for having made so far. And uh, now only a very small portion uh, before you lead to success remains and I'm sure you will make it but before that let me tell you that you have chosen a particular path in your career which is the best let me say that next hundred years the civil services would continue to be the best service in this country and civil service does not mean only Indian administrative service so uh, Indian uh, the civil services actually include all the services there are almost two dozen services and all are good so therefore don't just aim for Indian administrative service the, the recent uh, changes which have been introduced by the present government that show clearly that uh, they are giving a lot of importance to the other services as well so whether it is Indian Revenue Service Indian Railway Traffic Service or Customs and so on so therefore the very fact that you qualify for any particular service should be good enough. And then you can take one year extraordinary leave. And if you want, you can compete for the Indian Administrative Service also. But Indian Administrative Service also has got its pros and cons. So there are issues concerning that. And the, one of the major concerning issues is the cadre. Because cadre is a, is a thing which is dicey. And there are not many cadres in this country which are regarded as 
outstanding cadres. So I would not like to um, venture into that area. But what I'm trying to emphasize upon is the top positions in the government of India are not only restricted to the Indian administrative service. You have uh, railway service, you have got revenue service occupying the position of CBC or election commission and so on. So top positions are now going to a plethora of services. So therefore, don't just think that you have to make to only to the Indian administrative service. Well, if you make it, well and good. But if you make it, but you land in a bad cadre, then what is the worth of having that? It's better to be in central service. Revenue service, whether customs or income tax are extremely good. Ordinary accounts is very good. Railway traffic is very good. So having said that, first of all, let me say that the civil service is not a job. It is a service. Service for the citizens of this country. You know, the type of governance that we have got right now, it's a change. The kind of governance we had before independence, that was called as a colonial system of governance. And now after independence, it is called as citizen-centric system of governance. Everything that you do as a civil servant is basically aimed with one particular focus, and that is the citizen of this country. So central government, state government, all make their schemes and program, keeping in view the focus that is the citizen. So one of the questions which obviously uh, are, is always asked in the civil services is why civil service? And people give all kinds of answers. Some are impressive, some are not at all impressive. I have been on the board of UPSC for almost five years, and I have se seen such kind of answers which are coming out, tutored, and uh, which really do not make cut and ice. For example, someone will say, I will serve, want to serve the society. Don't say that. Every service serves the society. An engineer also serves the society. A doctor also serves the society. You have to say something more than that. So starting off with this question, then I will come to the specific things which are uh, part of the uh, interview. So why civil service? Why do you want to come to the civil service? There are five reasons why civil service distinguish themselves from the other services. The uniqueness of the civil service. Number one, it allows you to occupy leadership positions at a very young age. You become the SDM, you become the collector, you become the head of the department at a very young age, which is not provided for in any other service. So leadership positions at a very young age. Number two, it gives you a lot of diversity. So if there are 26 letters in the English alphabet, a to Z, every letter represents a department. A is agriculture, F is forest, okay? D is defense, you have got uh, E is environment, W is wildlife. Every letter represents a department. And during your 37 years of service, you will be touching upon at least 20 such departments. And that is the kind of exposure that you will have in the civil services, which is not available anywhere in any other service. So number two. Number three, it gives you an opportunity to be a part of the public policy cycle. Now public policy cycle is something, problem identification, you know, there are six steps to the public policy cycle. Those of you who have done public administration, even otherwise you would be knowing that there are six steps, problem identification, then agenda setting, and after that, the, the policy formulation, the policy legitimization, policy implementation, and policy evaluation. So there are six steps. A civil servant takes part in all the six stages of the policy cycle. He formulates the policy, he implements the policies, he evaluates the policy. No service in this country provides you that opportunity to be a part of the public policy cycle which civil services provide. And then fourth is, it gives you an opportunity to be very creative, lot of opportunity for creativity and innovation. You become the collector, you hold the charge of the district, two years you remain and those two years, it is like a laboratory where you carry out experiments and see the results within two years. So that is the kind of power that you exercise as a civil servant. 
you can carry out an experiment see the results within two years lot of creativity lot of innovation which is not available elsewhere and then it gives you a part become a part of the public governance in this country you can touch the lives of the citizens of this country you the poor people uh, the landless people the farmers you know the shopkeepers every there are so many stakeholders it gives you an opportunity to be a part of the public governance of this country so these are the things which make the civil service unique and that is why you want to enter the civil services if you say i want power i want authority many people do that at the time of interview i want power i want authority or someone will say oh because my parents wanted me to become or someone will say ki i saw in my college uh, a collector had come and i was really impressed by him the way he or she was uh, you know displaying so these may be fine you know your your uh, uh, going by what your parents want may be fine but it should come in lower priority the important thing is the uniqueness of the civil services which you have to tell okay so that was the first thing which i wanted to talk to you about because that is the basic question which is often asked and then one another question which is a basic question which is asked is because nowadays their trend is that lot many people are coming from the technology uh, to the civil services so having done engineering uh, or uh, mbbs so they come to the civil services perfectly fine the earlier trend used to be from arts and humanities but now it is from the engineering services but then the basic question which is asked is you have spent 4 years in engineering you have spent lot of money of government and your parents and now you have left that seat if that seat was allowed given to another person who was way down in that seniority don't you think you are doing injustice to that person and you are leaving that and you are coming to the civil services this again requires a very intelligent handling so you will have to say in probably of course it's not a neat answer i'm not saying that it's a neat answer but you will have to say that engineering services provide me an opportunity to be analytical to problem solving you know decision making you know use of mathematics so these things will in any way going to be there and in the administration also you require analytical ability you require problem solving and so on so this is how you will say and then you will say that everyone should have all the opportunities so in case an opportunity of civil service is available whether one has done a ba or bsc or engineering i think uh, i i would like to avail that opportunity something like like that you know so you will have to these ba two basic questions are invariably asked now coming to uh, specific uh, things i have put some of the points in front of you then i will come to some other things also with a greater detail and please feel free to ask me any question any point of time uh, i am not uh, you know one of the important things you have to learn and understand is having become a civil servant you will need to have excellent communication skills oratory power and because as collector or as a civil servant you will be required to make speeches on various occasion whether it is 26 january or 15th august or any other occasion and you must have that capability that you know those were the days when we were in the schools and colleges we had to make a presentation at the annual function to kya hote the na pair kaapne lagte the muh sook jata tha those kind of things used to happen now those things cannot happen you have to develop uh, the the flair for speaking oratory power and that requires three things one knowledge the other skills the third is attitudes so there are three things which are required for you to become an able officer knowledge try to read as much as possible you see what happens is once we join the civil service or for that matter any service we stop reading we say kept to job mil gaya there is no need to need but keep on reading something read a book at least one book in a week so that you improve your knowledge fiction non fiction anything so one is the knowledge the second is called skill skills include many of them so oratory power is one communication skills writing skills documentation skills presentation skills it skills listening skills conflict management skills these are all skills which are required and you will be required to learn those skills in order to become an able administrator and third is called attitude 
attitude comprises of three things one is called creativity second is called accountability and p is called positivity so creativity whatever goes on you must change that question that when you will join the civil services there when will be many things you will think yaar theek to chal rahi there is no need to change but then change is what actually brings about an improvement in the system if the change was not done then probably we will be still be going to the railway station to purchase railway tickets but now it is not necessary you can do that through the ict through that site you can purchase a railway ticket if that was possible then you still you would be going to get the passport you will take 3 months to get the passport now you get in 3 days all this has been possible because of creativity some civil servant who was creative he brought about that change so change is permanent in this world and you have to realize that particular thing so i am reminded of a uh, an anecdote so all of you have heard the old story of a a capsuler ek aadmi topi bechta tha and that capsuler he was carrying his the entire bundle of caps on his head and he was moving from his village to another village to sell those caps on the way he stopped rested for a while had his grub and then fell asleep and then when he got up he found that those monkeys had come you know that story monkeys had come from top and they had taken away all those caps and they were sitting with those caps on the branches so this fellow tried his level best to get those caps back but he could not get then he remembered the old fable which said that monkeys imitate nakalchi hote hain bandar to he wore a cap and threw down that cap so every monkey wore his cap and threw down the cap on the floor and he gathered those caps and went away but the story does not end there 40 years passed his grandson also was in the business of cap selling so one day his grandson was also moving with the bundle of caps to another village on the way he stopped and had his grub and after that he fell asleep thandi thandi bayar bah rahi thi so gaya when he got up he found that monkeys had come and they had taken away all his caps so he remembered his grandfather saying him telling him ke aise caps tum wapas le sakte ho so he wore his cap and threw down the cap but no monkey wore the cap or threw down the cap waise ke waise pehne hue monkeys baithe rahe they did not throw the cap and then one monkey came down and he whispered in his ear kya samajhte ho tumhare hi dada ji the hamare bhi to dada ji the unhone humko sab kuch bata diya tha are kuch naya karte some creative kuch hote tab probably you could have fooled us so every day you have to understand as a civil servant you have to distinguish yourself from others it is a huge competition everyone is running very fast you have to stay one or two steps ahead of others that is how you have made it to this level by moving faster than the others and therefore in the civil service also you will require to do that so therefore do not stop reading improve your knowledge improve your skills and have your correct attitudes so cap was the attitude creativity accountability accountability is basically taking responsibility this thing you should learn from today itself taking responsibility for your actions so i am reminded of a, a, a very wonderful uh, incident all of you must have heard about accountability so that was apj abdul kalam apj abdul kalam worked in two government organization one was drdo the other was isro who was his boss in isro hmm? satish dhawan so satish dhawan once uh, entrusted the launch of a satellite to apj abdul kalam and the day the satellite was to be launched the computer said don't launch there is a flaw somewhere it will be a disaster it will be a failure but mr kalam was so confident of himself that he overruled the computer and manually launched the satellite the satellite went up and fell into the bay of bengal it was a complete disaster and failure so mr kalam was very upset and very dejected and disappointed he went and met his boss satish dhawan and satish dhawan said you don't have to worry i am responsible i am accountable to the system you just call the media because media was gunning after isro and the media was called and mr satish dhawan addressed the media and he said if anyone is to be held responsible it is me and no one else 
and then he added but six months down the line we will launch another satellite and this time it will be a hundred percent success and he reposed confidence in mr kalam and he was again made the in charge of the satellite launch and this time there was no mistake the satellite was successful launch the entire country was in jubilation and this time with great happiness and delight on his face mr kalam went to meet mr satish dhawan and you know satish dhawan what he said he said today i'm not going to address the media you will address the media you will take the entire credit for this launch and then rest is history so mr kalam has written in his memoirs that when there was a failure the entire blame was taken over by satish dhawan and when there was a success the entire credit was given to me and my team so that is accountability which you will need to practice in every day of your civil service third is positivity positivity i don't have to tell you positivity is you will have to learn from the failures always be optimistic and therefore there will be ups and downs in your life as they always happen but you have to keep a brave face learn from the failures fall down but again get up so life is not hunky dory it is not just uh, you know up and up it's a sine curve so there are crests crests as well as tufts so therefore learn to be positive so with that let me come to the specific uh, things so 20 to 25 minutes is the time you will get you have to make the best use of it okay so let me tell you narrate to you those of you who might have appeared earlier also you would be having an idea about the interview but just to recapitulate for the sake of nostalgia for them also you will be made to sit in a room which is called as a waiting room so you will reach the upsc gate must reach at least half an hour before and keep in mind the fact that there may be traffic problems also so if you reach slightly in advance there is no harm in that but it is better rather than you know huffing and puffing and reaching there so therefore reach in time and then you will be made to sit in a waiting room inside in the waiting room there are number of newspapers which will be lying there magazines newspapers drinking water there will be washroom facility so you will be made to wait there every member uh, of upsc has got a waiting room so now what happens is that the upsc you have a chairman you have members every member is the chairman of that particular board okay and then there are four other members belonging to different services it can be one from ias one from ips one from a vice chancellor of a university it can be indian foreign service also and so on so there will be five members rudimentary all of you know about it but still i am repeating it for the sake so there will be that member upsc will be sitting in the in the middle he will be having the, all those papers regarding your daf so and a part of the daf part of that is also circulated amongst the other four members also and then there will be a glass of water in front of you so that if you become thirsty you can always take that glass of water with the permission of the chairman there is nothing wrong with that there will be a notebook and a pen in front of you so if you want to deliberate think about some question before coming out with that answer you can always take permission from the chairman sir can i use this book notebook for a while he say yes go ahead jot down your thoughts and then come out with the answer nothing wrong with that and one should do that if you are not in a position to uh, make your thoughts you know concentrated then the question is when your turn will come three things which i always say one is when you are about to enter always believe in yourself and say to yourself that here is an opportunity which has come to me and i will make it auto suggestion always helps so think that opportunities do not come again and again but having this got this opportunity let's try to make the best of it but at the same time don't think on the result you have to only do the karma you cannot think about the result so don't forget about the result but do the as much possible as possible the second is take long breaths it's always bring down the nervousness the board is very friendly in most of the cases i mean exceptions may be there but otherwise the boards are very encouraging very friendly they will always like to cheer you up 
and never put you down. They will never do that. Some of the mock boards, I'm sure some of you must, must have gone. So some of the mock boards, they try to discourage, which is actually not so in the real boards. In the real boards, they are very, very encouraging. And so therefore, you don't have to worry on that score. So second thing is take long breaths. And before entering the room, take a glass of water, definitely. Keep your throat absolutely wet. Otherwise, you are likely to have congestion at the time of the interview. Simple things, but doable things. Once you enter, then you must greet the lady members separately. And all male members can be grouped together. So the lady member, good morning ma'am, or good afternoon ma'am, and good morning sirs, or good afternoon sirs. So the male members can be bracketed together, but the lady member must be addressed separately. Okay? They will make you comfortable, they will make you sit in front of them. And then the chairman of the board, that is the member UPSC, will start off by telling you about, they will, they will ask whether this photograph is yours or not, because they have a photograph, they will show it to you. Is it your photograph? You'll say, yes, it is my photograph. And then they will read out your basic things which they are from the DAF. And uh, everyone, every member also the, of the board also has those papers. So they will have a fairly good understanding as to the places where you have, from where you come from, the state, the district, your educational qualification, if you have worked in earlier places, your hobbies, all those things. And then the chairman will ask one or two questions and then pass it on to the other members. So if you see, 20 minutes is the interview uh, time. So there are five members. So you can say on the average, there will be four minutes devoted to each member. In those four minutes, you will be asked a question also and you will be have to answer the question also. So therefore, naturally, you have to ensure that the answers are not very long. Because if the answers are very long, you will tend to get lesser number of questions and your aim should be to answer as many questions as possible. Okay? The interview is the test of knowledge, skills and attitudes. But, but, knowledge has been practically tested in the mains. Okay? So now it will be mostly about the skills and attitudes. But, knowledge about the current affairs is definitely they are going to ask you domestic as well as international. So the last two years, current affairs, you must study. And then things related to your educational qualifications, whatever graduation you have done, so they will ask questions on that also. The place to which you belong, that they will really ask. If you have been in three places, supposing your father has, uh, uh, has was a transferable officer, he might have stayed at three places. So don't think that uh, you can get away with this answer. majority They can ask you any question on any of the three places. So don't take that excuse. Okay? Let's proceed for it. Answer should be rational. These are the three things you have to understand. The answer should never give this impression that you are not rational. Rational means you must balance pros and cons. Let me give you an example. Some controversial questions which come. Reservation policy, corruption, Article 370, love jihad controversy, hijab controversy, Ayodhya temple, demonetization. These are all controversial questions. You have to appear very rational in them. You should never give this impression that you are biased in favor of any one of them. So the important thing to remember is whenever such a question is asked, always try to give both the sides. For example, reservation policy. So you will have to say that the framers of the constitution decided for re reasons that certain section of the society were not getting their due and therefore they decided to bring in reservation. You will not criticize reservation. You will not criticize uh, uh, you know, issues connected with women. Women again, even though you may be a masculine, but your ideas must always be feminine. Let me make it very clear to you. You have to be in favor of women power. So 
you you may you will require to talk about many schemes for example the schemes which government of india has brought about in respect of four categories must remember them women children senior citizens and scheduled caste scheduled tribes these are the four so therefore what i am trying to say is you should be rational whenever they ask you a question which may have different connotation which may have uh, different uh, view points you must give both the view points you can say it this way sir there are two schools of thought in this so one school of thought says this and another schools of thought says this and then they will say all right what is your opinion what's your opinion about it there are two schools of thought you will give that opinion which is in line with the government thinking please please don't try to be revolutionary there the time this interview is not the time to take risks in life you will take risks in life when you become a civil servant but not at the time of interview be very conservative very traditional in your answers so whatever is the line which is laid down by the government whether it is article 370 whether it is ayodhya temple whether it is uh, for example love jihad controversy or demonetization or police encounter and so on there are many controversial things which we police encounter you will never support police encounter never you will say it's illegal it is the job of the judiciary to take uh, you know bring the the, the, the law breakers to book police has nothing no role in it some people will be tempted to say yes bada acha kiya ji they must be killed these criminals because judicial process takes a long time they may be right i am not at all trying to this but interview is not the time where the where you have to answer this kind of guns so you will say you will remain on the right side of the law always so there are three things remember remain on the right side of the law number 1 in giving answers number 2 remain on the side of the government don't try to be against the government if there is a policy of the government regarding article 370 you will not criticize that policy in any case that has been laid to rest by the by the supreme court and third is where there is a court ruling you will take shelter behind that court ruling while giving an answer if supposing hijab has been set to rest you will say well the matter has already been brought to rest by the supreme honorable supreme court or article 370 or in the ayodhya controversy these have all been decided by the judiciary so rather than coming into the controversy you will lean on the shoulders of that particular judicial order which has led that matter to rest okay so this is how you have to be rational you have to be ethical now ethical is something you need to give your answers which are ethical in the sense you will not for example let me ask you a question that uh, there are two people one of them is uh, dishonest but very efficient the other person is honest but totally inefficient which of the two would you like to recruit if you are making a recruitment now many people will say well i would like to have an efficient person even if he is dishonest don't say such answers it may be right in some cases but it is better to stick on the side of being ethical so accountability honesty integrity transparency which are the values all of you have done gs4 papers here you are aware about what are the values which are required to be practiced your answer should reflect ethical for example if someone says that uh, a police constable searching uh, the bus finds a bag of 1 lakh rupees and he goes and gives that money to the owner by because his address is written there and the owner gives him 10000 rupees as a reward do you think he should accept that so now you will say no sir no, then you will say why say because he is paid salary for that it is his duty you have to be ethical in your answer you cannot be unethical even if it may appear to be a kind of a mundane answer even if it is a mundane answer but that is how you have to be appear and ethical then secular secular means you will not take sides in terms of religions and one thing i can tell you 
I'm wearing these key, these rings. Do not wear any ring when you are going for the interview. You will not wear any dhaga or anything or tripund or tilak. You will not do that. Even if it means that it is going against your beliefs, but there you will not show any such impression that you are superstitious. Okay? And that is what is called as being rational, ethical, and secular. So, as a collector or as a civil servant, you will be required to be equal to all the religions, all the communities, everyone. So, that is the impression which they should not get from your interview. And then, communication. All of you know about it. Communication skills are very necessary. And communication, two things are very important. One is eye contact. The other is scan. Now the person who is asking the question, you have to have an eye contact with that particular person. True. But while you are answering the question, you should also quickly scan the entire board from left to right or right to left. So that everyone feels that yes, you are also interested in him or her. He should not get this impression that he or she has been left behind. So you have to scan, but keeping the eye contact with the person who has asked that particular question. Now, how to practice communication skills? One is, again, a very old mundane method. Speak before a mirror. One of your friends, your brother or sister, he can be there to record that with your mobile phone. And speak before the mirror. See how your uh, mouth is working, your eyes are working, your other faculties are working. And then read it, play it again to see which are the faults which you have found. Now, while making uh, good communication skills, always remember that whatever you speak, there should be modulation in the voice. It should not be a flat voice. So, things like when it is a wonder or any other emotions which are there, you have to express a little bit of uh, you know emotions through the uh, the modulation in the voice and then one more thing uh, is, is is equally important is that do not use hands here i am using hands because i am making a presentation to you but in the interview you will have to keep your hands on your knees and make it still and just the head should move now, this is something which some people say, you know, why not? No, it does not give a good impression. Nobody likes to see, you know, uh, uh, an aspiring uh, officer trying to explain with gesticulations. So the hand should remain there. Believe me, it's very serious business. Don't take it lightly. Interview is important. 275 or 300 marks, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, marks. And you can make a difference in it. You can really make a difference in it. Getting uh, 180 marks and uh, getting 225 marks, there is a huge difference. And you know what happens that, as I was telling you that, four minutes everyone will devote. And then 20 minutes, at the end of it, the chairman sometimes will ask you, chairperson rather, chairman. Okay, uh, so uh, your interview is almost over. Now tell me, is there any particular area where you would like us to ask you questions? It happens sometimes. Be very careful about this thing. You have to be very cautious when such a question is asked. If your interview has gone very well, don't volunteer to take any further questions. If it has not gone well and you feel that there is a scope for improvement, then you can name that particular topic of your choice that, sir, the, I would like you to ask question on this particular topic so that you can end the interview on a happy ending. The last question which you are going to answer is very crucial. You must try, I'm not saying that it is possible always, try to answer the last question in the best possible manner. Because after that, you will be leaving that board and they will be awarding you the marks. Last impression, acha hona chahiye. So what happens is after you leave, then the chairman will consult other members. I, when I was there, I, he, he invariably used to consult me. He said, Kitne percentage? how many percentages? So we give percentages. So I will say, 
sir i think he was very good 62% they will ask other members also someone will say 60% someone 64% and then they will average out something like but there is no such thing like actually averaging out it is just consensus which takes place so therefore you will be awarded marks then those were the days when when i appeared for the interview the marks rarely exceeded 50% rarely it was almost 50% was the bahut badhiya tha but now we give marks almost the best marks are 75% minimum marks which we get normally is not below 40% 40 se kam ko nahi milenge aapko itna to aap kuch bhi performance karenge you will be able to get 40% but then as i said there is always a competition there was this american and a japanese and they were very good friends so they went they were very fond of uh, hunting so they went to a jungle to hunt and throughout the day they were hunting and by the end of the day they ran out of bullets khatam ho gayi bullets and then what happened that they suddenly heard the roar of a lion from behind it was getting dark they heard the roar sher ki dahad sunai padi so the american started running barefooted nange pair daudne laga towards the jeep and he shouted at that japanese also you also run for your lives the lion is going to come from behind us he will going to eat you up so the japanese instead of running he sat down and he started wearing his sport shoes nike ya reebok jo bhi laya tha wo he started wearing them so the american said are you out of your mind the lion is coming from behind and you are wearing the shoes he is going to eat you up he said i am wearing the shoes so that i can run faster than you because you are running barefooted when i will run with my shoes on i will be faster than you i will stay two or three steps ahead of you and the lion is going to come from behind and he is going to eat you up and not me and once he has eaten you up he is going to stop because he has got his meal in the meanwhile i will run away now exactly this is what is happening in this competitive world you have to wear those extra shoes extra knowledge extra skills in order to be one or two steps ahead of others and that is how you will make it to the civil services okay so communication uh, was an important thing answer should be succinct succinct means to the point why to the point why succinct and to the point yeah limited time limited time imagine 20 minutes how many questions you can take maybe 10 12 this is other nahi ho payega because some time is and particularly agar language ki uh, ka issue hai so there is an interpreter particularly i have seen some people you know they they opt for marathi language or uh, some other language of uh, india nothing wrong with that but the number of questions come downs then because thoda samay usko explain karne mein lagta hai translate karne mein lagta hai and therefore you lose time on that so therefore and secondly let me make it very clear to you if you speak in hindi or in speak in english it does not matter the marks are not awarded more to those candidates who have got english as their flair as a language hindi also gets the same marks so language does not matter but knowledge does matter skill does matter and attitude does matter so answer should be succinct voice should be loud but soft and modulation don't bluff if you know part of the answer say that much only and you say sir or ma'am only this much i know i do not know anything more than that but at least tell that whatever you are certain about but don't bluff if you don't know you say i'm sorry sorry one or two saying i do not know does not matter koi fark nahi padne wala hai but if you keep on saying i don't know i don't know then of course it will make a difference so that is again is an important thing you have to keep in mind take a glass of water give examples you remember gs4 paper mein padhte samay everything had to be given through an example so here also at least give one example in support of your answer because that is going to strengthen your answer so if you can give example from your own life or from anything which has happened in the real life 
it can be from the scriptures also it will support you in a much better way so try to give examples in support for example if they say what has the government done regarding uh, uh, women's empowerment so you must give example you say beti bachao beti padhao the education sector or ujwala yojana and so on so you must give example and prioritize your answer what is prioritizing your answer aha uh -huh. okay so if your answer comprises of many parts a b c d e f give that part of the answer first which is the most important so you have to prioritize because every there, there can be many reasons why india people are poor or why the population is increasing there can be many answer to that what ails our democracy so but bring that part of the answer which is the most important because if you have given that that member will be satisfied ki ha the most important answer has come about okay so prioritizing you have limited time you have to prioritize your answer prepare general knowledge particularly current affairs we have already discussed last two years at least prepare the general knowledge and the current affair domestic as well as international if the prime minister has addressed uh, opened up a conference on artificial intelligence in the last few days you must know about it what is going to follow you must know about it you must know what is life what is prime minister's uh, view about the uh, environmental uh, sustainability so there anything which is happening particularly that day on which you are going for the interview that day's newspaper you must read quite a bit okay and uh, newspaper of that hobbies graduation subjects place of residence all of you know about it that place of residence where you belong to that state so the state's sort analysis you must know i often ask this question if someone is coming from rajasthan what are the strengths of rajasthan what are the weaknesses of rajasthan so strengths you will say well the, the plenty of sun plenty of uh, you know power and uh, you have got very good infrastructure roads the industrial policy is very good and uh, what are the weaknesses well the social problems which are there so the regarding empowerment of women and so on and the old traditions some other positive things is about the culture and the cultural heritage of rajasthan so one question which typically one is asked is if you have to sell your state to a foreigner how will you sell your state so supposing an nri has come and he wants to set up an industry you are the industry secretary you have to sell your state how will you sell it what are the positive things which you will say and what are the negative things you will say negative things you will not say but positive things you must tell them ki ye ek acche positive karan hai okay so uh, hobbies i'm sure you must have filled up many hobbies but uh, the daf time is also over but now that you have filled up the hobbies you must prepare every hobby very well and uh, just because you have filled it up does not mean that they may not ask any question so some people write diary writing and some there are so many um, hobbies which they they philately and walking and and cricket so cricket for example many questions can be asked on cricket and um, football and hockey so why football and hockey are not getting the place which cricket has got and i ask this typical question sometime that uh, why is it that uh, uh, these some of the people get huge amount of remuneration consideration don't you think there is a need for curbing their salaries so the cricketers the actors the doctors the lawyers do you think don't you think a cap is should be necessary so again a controversial question you will have to balance the answer so such kind of answers they will like to ask you typical questions in which you may have to think and come out with a rational answer so uh, if companies where you have worked earlier if you have worked in any other in company before coming for the interview you must uh, know the basic facts about that company so the profitability the turnover the number of employees what are its manufacturing and so on and then uh, in case uh, you are know part of the answer as i said and give that part of the answer in case of controversial topics i was already telling you these are the controversial topics so reservation corruption love jihad hijab 
demonetization, same-sex marriage, again is a topic, or uh, even homosexuality and surgical strikes, Article 370, citizenship register, police encounter. So you must give a very balanced answer, giving pros and cons. If court order is there, then lean on that court order. As I gave you, many, many things, your controversy will be totally avoided in case there is a court order on that. So you can say that the court has already re ruled on that. So no further question will be asked to you. And don't take risks in interview. Reserve them for a time once you are in the civil service. Field as many questions as possible. That is possible only when you do not give very longish answers. Your first, in fact, uh, question, the, the first answer should be, the first sentence should be able to give you that answer. Pahela sentence jo boliye, that should be the point blank answer to that particular question. Sometimes they will say, all right, let's move to another question. Last question is very important. People don't tell you this thing, but I always try to say that the last question which you field does matter a lot. Your marks are awarded on the basis of the impression you leave before leaving the room. And glass of water and a pen and paper on the table, so take help if necessary. Avoid rings, anything denoting specific religion, principles or beliefs. Never argue with the members. So even if you don't agree with the members, never argue. And uh, the way to say this thing is like this. Uh, Sir, I see uh, your, the point which you have made, or the madam, I, I totally I understand the point which you are, it's a very important point. But sir, uh, I would like to give my another point of view also in this regard. So that's a very uh, beautiful way of saying that there is another viewpoint, rather than saying that I don't agree with you. Because that is going to unnecessarily alienate you from other, from the panelists, you know. So therefore, try to appreciate the argument, even if you don't agree. There are many people in our lives whose faces we don't want to see, but still we have to make peace with them also. It's like that also in interview also. And then, practice communication skills, speaking before a mirror, that uh, using a... Uh, uh, you know, the good words which you come across, try to learn as many words as possible. My, my younger daughter who was, uh, who, who is in the civil services, she was had this habit. Those were not the days of mobile phones. So when she was in the school, she always used to carry a pocket dictionary in her, in her pocket. And uh, whenever she came across a new word, she would immediately take out the pocket dictionary and see the meaning of that particular word. And that is, was the way and we used to read books like Six Weeks to Words of Power by Wilfred Funk and uh, learn new words. So your knowledge, uh, of course, I'm not saying that you learn the words of Shashi Tharoor. That's not necessary. That is not what is required in the interview. But try to uh, gain uh, as many new things as possible. Okay. So interview judges your personality. And what are the things that they see is mental alertness. Critical power of assimilation. That means you have the power to critically, critically analyze a situation. That is through step by step. That is critical examination of assimilation. Clear and logical exposition. Your clarity should be there. There should not be, uh, uh, it should not give an impression which is uh, vague. It should be clear. And balance of judgment, the pros and the cons should always be there sense of proportion and variety and depth of interest. So uh, depth of interest means, supposing they ask you a question, they will ask you a supplementary question also and another supplementary. So you have to prepare every subject to its depth so that you can answer uh, the supplementaries also. So that is what is called as depth of interest and ability for social cohesion. What is that? Social cohesion. Hmm? Yeah, in, absolutely correct. Inclusiveness or inclusivity uh, in our actions. So to care for scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes, the weaker sections of the society, the especially uh, abled people, uh, and so on. So that is inclusivity. And what is the uh, slogan given by the prime minister on inclusivity? Yeah. So that is what is inclusivity. And uh, you should have a very human uh, sensitivity towards people's 
uh, suffering. So, so many times this question I often ask, the, what's the difference between uh, pity, sympathy, empathy and compassion? So all the four are very similar, but there is a difference in all the four. So you must understand and you must always have uh, sympathy uh, in respect of sufferings of the people because that is what they are going to sometimes like to see. And many times they ask you questions on ethical dilemmas. So ethical dilemmas, let me narrate to you a question. And I ask this question many times. Not every time gives everyone gives an answer. You are posted as SDM. Okay. A lady officer, particularly. A lady officer is posted as SDM. And the collector invites you for dinner. And after the dinner is over, the collector's wife she comes to you and she asks you to come to a corner and then she says that her husband beats her up. He commits domestic violence. Now he is your boss and boss's wife is saying about his, her husband, what will you do? Dilemma. On one hand you are the lady, you are the lady STM, you have to care for everyone including the uh, the women in the society on the other hand it is your boss who is going to give you annual confidential reports he will write your report also so there is an ethical dilemma how will you answer that question take another example you are the sdm and the collector one day calls you and he says meet madam and uh, she's the wife of the adjoining district's collector. So, the adjoining district, there is another collector. His wife has come for shopping. And the collector asks you that, uh, why don't you take her around and get the things, whatever she wants to purchase. And she goes around with you, you help her in purchasing. And then she comes back and goes back to her district without making the payment. Now, the shopkeepers since you are present with her, they don't ask for payment. Next day, the shopkeepers come to you and they say, Sir, payment we have not received. What will you do? You will go to the collector and you collector, you tell collector, Ki, Sir, ma'am to bina payment ke chali gai. So the collector tells you, I have nothing to do with this. You should have asked for that payment. It is your between you and that lady wife. Now you are in a fix. What will you do? It's a dilemma. So many people will say that A, this answer, B answer, C answer. So you will have to think of such situations in the interview if that question comes. How will you respond to that particular thing? So uh, ethical dilemmas are, are very common things. So overall personality, warmth, how warm you are, sincerity, keenness, desire to learn, conviction to stand firm and willingness to admit mistakes. So if you are have made a mistake, you can immediately say, I'm sorry sir, that's a mistake. I would like to correct what I have just now said. That will never go against you. It will in fact go in favor of you. Approach, aptitude and attitude in attempt to interaction and answering the question. So what is your aptitude? What is the attitude? Positive attitude, creative attitude, ability of verbal and non-verbal communication. As I said, non-verbal is movement of eyes, movement of scanning the entire thing, modulation and voice. But don't use your hands. Hands are not to be used. And of course, verbal. And if you the question you have not understood, then you must politely ask the board, uh, sir or ma'am, uh, I, I, I could not understand the question. Would you kindly repeat it for me? Let it be repeated. Otherwise, you might be answering a totally uh, different question. And then you will be totally uh, marked, you know, evaluated on that. Rather than that, it's better to ask the question again. So don't hesitate on that account. 
and then uh, understanding of the issues and ability to provide comprehensive and adequate responses to the real life example. So many examples which you might have undergone, principles of honesty or integrity or discipline or diligence, accountability, transparency, you can mention them, but small examples, you see. For example, when we talk about integrity, I'm sure some of you must have already come across that one example of integrity is that you are driving a car at 2 o'clock in the night, you come across a red signal, red light signal. Now the tendency, there is no traffic, there is no police constable, so one will be tempted to jump that red light. That is called as lack of integrity. So someone asks you what is integrity, you give an example like that. So this is how <coughs> that will make your answer much more impressive. And public service orientation, honesty in responding, how better the candidate is from the other candidates. So ultimately it is comparison. Sometimes, you know what we do? At the end of the day, you know, there are two parts to the interview. The first part is pre-lunch, the other is post-lunch. Pre-lunch we have about five to six candidates, post-lunch we have five to six candidates. And then in the pre-lunch, what we initially do is that the marks are done, made, to everyone but then at the end before lunch we go through those marks again to understand the comparison between the candidate so someone will say um, I think candidate number three was the best so therefore the best mark should be given to that candidate number three so it is the comparison ultimately which happens that is why I said wear those Nike shoes and run faster than the others because you have to stay much above other people there are some standard questions which I'm sure all of you know about it. I will not devote much time on that. So you introduce yourself, tell us about your family, know yourself, be prepared with the meaning of your name. This, of, this is very often question is asked, what is the meaning of your name? And uh, they also ask your parents, what is their profession, what is their occupation, domicile, schooling, college education, professional education places of your longer stay, they will ask you that question. And uh, sort, what is your strengths, weaknesses? Now, when you talk about weakness, mention that weakness which is actually your strength. It appears to be a weakness. For example, uh, and don't say something which is actually the weakness. For example, you'll say that I'm very persistent in my work. You say that as your weakness. Actually, being persistent is a strength. But it will give that. So never give that thing as your weakness, which is actually weakness. It should be actually your strength, but you will put it in a way that it is your weakness. Or I don't stop at unless I have achieved something. So that takes a long time. But that is actually a good thing also. So try to give that weakness, which is actually your strength. And then, of course, opportunities and threats, all these with examples. Hobbies and interests is something which uh, you must learn quite well because uh, whatever you mention in that, they are going to, the achievements part also as well as the hobbies part. So they are going to ask definitely question. For example, cricket. Uh, many people uh, know everything about cricket, but some people do not know, for example, what is a short ball or what is a short run or what is a yorker. So there are many. In what ways a batsman can be out? How many ways can it be out? So people will generally say about catch out or bold or LBW, but there are many the other ways also he can be out. So you should know those things. Once you have mentioned it as your hobby, you must prepare it quite well. Uh, one thing which uh, I would like to mention is that uh, those people, particularly those of you who have done science, uh, either in BSc or in engineering, many time questions are asked, which are very simple questions, but relating to science, which we are not aware of. For example, why is the, the, the traffic signal, stop traffic signal is red, okay? And why the proceeding is green? Why the sky is blue? Why does water boil? Uh, why, why you can't prepare dal, uh, you know, pulses well in high mountains? Now, these are simple questions. One question which I often ask, particularly those who have taken aeronautical engineering or mechanical engineering, is why is it that the airplane fly? What is that principle of physics which applies here? 
Many people are not able to answer that, even though it's one of the fundamental principle that is Bernoulli's principle, but people don't know that. Now, why I'm saying so is, there is a beautiful book, Hindu's Book of Scientific Facts. Hindu's, Hindu is a paper, they brought about two or three volumes of books which deal with scientific facts. All the scientific facts which we witness in our day-to-day -day life, they are beautifully explained there, the reasoning behind that. If you are coming from a science background, the likelihood is that they may ask you questions on that scientific facts. So prepare well with the help of that particular book also. Real-time situations, vision uh, about life and ideologies. So what is your vision? What is the difference between vision and a mission? You know, so such kind of questions can be asked. What is vision, mission, objective and goal? Then body language. So body language uh, should uh, display confidence but modesty and seriousness. And sometimes out of the box questions uh, are asked which have nothing to do with your, uh, you know, either syllabus or otherwise. So they can ask you out of box questions also. And the board should not mistake your nervousness for or shyness for your lack of ability. So don't be nervous uh, or shy. As I said, here is an op opportunity which has come to you. You have toiled hard uh, to reach this stage. And now you cannot go back. And even whatever service you get, be happy with that. Take extraordinary leave for one year and prepare for the next service which you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. Nowadays, people get ultimately into the IAS in four attempts, three attempts. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, But one thing, as I said, uh, don't only think that IES is the best service. Nowadays, the Joint Secretaries and Secretaries of the Government of India, a large number of them are from non-IES. And people are getting uh, giving encouragement to the other services as well. Okay, so uh, personalize the answers rather than giving bookish or uh, answers. So as I said, why do you want to join civil service? Don't give bookish answers. Uh, you must give the in the manner which I have just now told you. Always try to relate and link the responses to your own personal instances. Keep the tempo low in the beginning and you can then pick up the tempo. One question which is often asked is, what is the dress that you wear at the time of interview? Now, uh, whereas there is a complete freedom of your dress, but my, with all humility at my command, my suggestion to you would be, and don't take umbrage to that at all, women must wear sari, nothing but the sari. I'm not at all saying that you cannot wear anything. You can wear everything, but it is always very graceful. Even in the official functions with the lady candidates, uh, well, ultimately, they will become officers. In all official functions, they are asked to wear a sari. Just like uh, in the official functions, the, the main, uh, male folks, they are supposed to, uh, particularly when the president is coming or the vice prime minister is coming, a buttoned up black coat or otherwise a suit. There in the interview, as far as the male folk are concerned, you can wear a simple uh, uh, you know, shirt and a pant, clean. But if you are uh, not having, a, uh, if you are having a beard, it should be night trimmed. If better, don't carry a beard. But if, if your religion requires it to carry a beard, there's nothing wrong with that, but it should be properly trimmed. And uh, then of course, as I said, don't wear any superstitious things to show that. And uh, prepare current affairs for the last two years. Remember the interview is mainly a test of personality and not so much of knowledge. Knowledge you have been already been tested, so it's more of personality. And if the board does not find the required personality in you, even then they will give you 20 minutes. So don't think that they are going to reduce the time if you are not up to the mark. 20 minutes they will always give. But the outstanding candidates, yes, they will probably give 25 to even 30 minutes also. But if you are just good, even then they will give you 20 minutes. So therefore, uh, the duration of the time of the interview it is going to be uniform in practically all cases. Okay, and uh, why is this interview important? Because the interview is your best opportunity to sell yourself as a candidate. It is where you actually sell it to the board that what exactly. I, uh, as I told you, 
uh, my daughter, my younger daughter, she got always, uh, she appeared twice or thrice and uh, ultimately all, always landed up with Indian Revenue Service Income Tax uniformly, got 225 marks out of 250 in the interview. Uh, so interview, it was very good and interview made a difference. Of course, uh, the mains also matter a lot. But uh, she's very happy with the Indian Revenue Service Income Tax. She has nothing to regret. And uh, I also sometimes feel that if she had got in the Indian Administrative Service, the important thing is once you join Indian Administrative Service, the purpose is to have an overall like, experience. That experience comes only in a typically uh, good state. So there are two states which are the hill states, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. You will not have that kind of experience of revenue which you will have in Haryana or Punjab or Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh or Rajasthan. So therefore, those two states are otherwise very peaceful, but you will not get that experience as an IS officer. So ultimately what happens is that if you land up with a bad cadre, then you are stuck up in that cadre or you go on a five-year deputation to your home cadre, which is not always easy, or you go to the central deputation. And central deputation, don't think of going on central deputation before the rank of director. Below that, it's not advisable. Director is the minimum. Joint secretary, of course, very good. And if you have not been to the government of India as director or otherwise, you will not become secretary there. So if you are having the, this particular uh, thing that you want to go to the government of India as secretary, you must do a central deputation before that. Director or joint secretary will be the ideal positions. So therefore, IAS has got its own. If you, are, if you get any central service, it's very good service. You will get the best stations in the country. And uh, uh, particularly for women candidates, central services are the best. And uh, I'm not at all trying to belittle the importance of IAS in any way. I have remained IAS for almost 37 years. I have seen some of the best experiences, but because I belong to a state cadre, which was a very good cadre, it was Haryana, and that is easy, very good cadre. So uh, ultimately, the board will be trying to assess what you can offer to the organization. And all economic parameters, this you must learn by heart learn by heart and the the exports the imports the repo rate the reverse repo rate the monetary policy the fiscal policy the balance of payment position the inflation rates the effect of covid-19 on economy these are all things related to the your interview so i always say that uh, go to the niti ayog website always to find out what is new is happening Go to the uh, finance ministry's website and also please, please do prepare all the public policies in respect of different sections of the society. For example, I asked them a question that uh, what are the public policies which the government of India has made regarding women, the schemes, the programs for providing protection to women. So, uh, and then I will drop a hint that uh, uh, you know, some of the acts which were, have been made, they are mostly violated. And I said that you will become the civil servant, you will also violate that act. So then they start thinking, sir, what is that thing? And then I say, dowry prohibition act. Because you will become the civil servant and probably you will ultimately end up taking the dowry. You are violating the dowry prohibition act. So for the protection of women, the domestic violence act, the dowry prohibition act, the Posh Act, okay? So sometimes you will ask that, what is the origin of that Posh? Those of you who are from Rajasthan probably would be knowing. Can anyone tell me what is the origin of Posh? Ha, so Vishakha guidelines se pehle kaun sa case hua tha? Bhavri Devi case. So Bhavri Devi case is the origin of that. And then Vishakha guidelines came and then Posh Act was there. So all the acts, which are there for the, for example, for senior citizens. They will ask you a question in the interview. Supposing an old couple comes to you who have been turned out of their house by their son, what are the remedies that you have got to restore them the house? Now that will be possible only when you have studied that special act 
which is there for the senior citizens, where the collector has got the power to do that. In fact, the, the, the just to just as a as a in a lighter vein, the collector has got power under at least 200 to 300 acts. Not everyone is aware about that. It has got power under Electricity Act. It has got power under the Railway Act. It has got power under the Pandemic Act. It has got power under the Disaster Management Act. So there are almost 200 places where collector has got the power. So civil servants wield lot of power. But you will not say that thing when you are asked why you want to come to the civil service. But it is the service which, and let me tell you very frankly that the difference between a politician and a public servant which you will become, the politician comes through the process of election, but all of you will come through the process of selection. You have come through a, an examination and an interview and therefore you have got much greater power and responsibility on your shoulders to bring about changes in the system of governance in the next 35 years which you are going to rule this country. I remember someone asking what is a public servant? Now public servant definition many people don't know, you see. So public servant, if you, if you, have, uh, if you are fond of reading, there is one particular book written by a civil servant, his name was R.P. Naronha. R.P. Naronha. And the name of the book which he wrote, the name of the book was A Tale Told by an Idiot. A Tale Told by an Idiot. Where R.P. Naronha wrote that when he was the collector, one day the minister came up to him and he said, Narona sahab, I am going to a village for a field visit. Why don't you accompany me? It will give you an opportunity to meet the people of the area. And he accompanied him and there on the dais both of them were sitting. So the minister got up and he said, Bhai your man, he is your new collector. He is your new collector. And he is a public servant. And you are the public. So he is your servant. You can order him anything and he will have to abide by that. It is just like your domestic servant. He will have to abide by that. Narona was amused. He said, Ki, this minister does not even know the definition of a public servant. So when the minister got down, Narona got up and he said, Bhai or bano, bade adab ke saath main kehna chahunga ki shayad mantri ji ko public servant ki definition nahi A public servant is one who gets salary from the public exchequer. That is why he is called a public servant. And he serves the people by enforcing the rule of law. I cannot serve the people illegally. It is like a police constable who is standing on the rotary and is regulating the traffic. Supposing the police constable does not do anything, he just stands there. What will happen? What will happen to the traffic? Everyone will move in his own way. There will be traffic jam. Police constable regulates that traffic. A public servant regulates that thing by the imposition of rule of law. I serve the people by enforcing the rule of law. So that is what you are going to become. And people will come to you because of three reasons. People come to the public servant because of three reasons. Bhavavash, Abhavavash, and that is what you are going to make the difference. That is why I said it is not a job, it is a service. The politician is still not believed as much as a public servant. So, log aate hai bhavavash, abhavavash, abhav matlab kuch unko. कुछ चाहिए किसी को राशन कार्ड चाहिए किसी को लाइसेंस चाहिए किसी को कुछ चाहिए पेंशन चाहिए अभाव है इसलिए आ रहे हैं और तीसरा है प्रभाववश क्योंकि पब्लिक सर्वेंट दे वील्ड लॉट ऑफ पावर प्रभाव है इफ ए पब्लिक सर्वेंट कॉल समवन ही विल हैव टू कम सो तीन कारणों से आते हैं लोग हमारे पास और इसलिए बीइंग ए पब्लिक सर्वेंट यू हैव रीच दिस फार एंड आई एम श्योर you are going to make a huge difference in the lives of the people of this particular country. So therefore, there is no need to be complacent. You have reached the last stage. Read as much as possible. Practice speaking as much as possible. And try to follow some of the, these small tips which I have tried to give you. And I'm sure you will definitely score 
around 60 to 70 percent marks you can do that it is a doable thing i have seen so many candidates and after the candidate has left the room we have literally clapped ki what a wonderful candidate we had today kabhi kabhi hum log sham ko dekhte the aaj kitne candidate aaye are aaj bahut acche candidates the char panch candidates bahut badhiya the and that is what makes us also very happy the board members also very happy so you have come this far there is no going back so last stage ko bhi waisi cross kar dijiye and if you have any questions to ask please feel free um, i will be happy to answer anything you want to ask me so one more thing which i always found was people tend to attend too many mocks don't attend too many mocks it will confuse you unnecessarily some of the the best institutions the including the present one that provides an excellent way of getting to know your strengths and weaknesses and uh, if you attend too many mocks it will unnecessarily put you into confusion so vision ias or for that matter any i think whatever you think proper though this uh, does provide some of the best things uh, to the candidate in terms of personality development so if you have any questions you can ask me yes ma'am uh, sir uh, you advise to give uh, conservative answers i had a doubt wherein uh, if they we are asked questions regarding center state conflicts or if we are asked to provide our opinion upon some controversial state policies especially in opposition rule states how do we provide a balanced answer yeah so uh, for example uh, the the state policy like which you mentioned uh, was food grains or uh, the for example, doorsteps for uh, example my uh, home state is uttar pradesh so i was reading suppose they asked something upon things like bulldozer justice so or uh, in terms of freebies so how do we give a balanced answer when we talk about bulldozer for example as i told you that you have to stand on the right side of the law so you will say illegal encroachments definitely have to be removed there is no doubt about it but it has to be removed with due process of law so you have to give notice and then giving an opportunity of being heard then you should remove them so removing encroachments is absolutely necessary because precious government land has been occupied illegally by the people and therefore it it is a job of the public servant to remove them but after following the rule of law we are not living in a country Uh, which is uh, totalitarian government uh, or banana republic we have to follow the due process of law that's a simple answer and nobody will ask any further question due process of law who will question that he will say that or freebies now freebies is something you say that uh, we uh, there is already i think uh, supreme court has uh, asked a committee uh, to be formed to look into that matter so, so yeah election commission exactly so the election commission you so you can always say that there is already a committee looking into this matter which will talk about the entire issue as such there are uh, we need to be very careful in deciding which are to be treated as freebies and which are not to be treated as freebies some kind of uh, um, uh, uh, rules uh, will have to be laid down about it but yes i agree on one hand it is public money it should not be frittered away like that but there are some sections of the society or there are some things which you need to attend to for example providing rations or uh, subsidies uh, fertilizer subsidies so therefore the larger question is already being uh, discussed before a forum and i think they will come out with some suitable solutions that's a very safe answer if something is sub judice you say that the matter is already Uh, being uh, you know debated before uh, the now this question uh, about same sex marriage came same sex marriage the government's thinking was totally different from the off the cuff remarks made by the chief justice of india because he was probably in favor of an off the cuff remark so now the question is supposing such a question is asked where the judiciary has made a certain observation and the government uh, uh, feels otherwise what will you say because believe me don't say anything against the government uh, for reasons i will not discuss here but uh, don't be on the wrong side of law of the government either here the best option was that it's a, such an issue 
which has a large facets large issues and this is not cannot be decided either by the government or the judiciary alone we will probably have to constitute a special you know think tank from all walks of life because it's got social angle it's got economic angle and then come out with a solution to that so this is how you know you will have to be very diplomatic in your answers in terms of uh, such questions which are uh, debatable and police encounter i gave you that example some people will like to go in favor mala chadhai for example those people who had shot the people unko mala male arpan kiya public ne so the, pub, the questioner asked ki don't you think it was a correct thing or someone will say it's not a correct thing so they will provoke you also sometimes and article 370 now you may have your personal views about article 370 you may have personal views about reservation but you will not talk here article 370 you will straight away say supreme court has laid down recently judgment everything has been laid down ayodhya temple now whether your that judgment was right or wrong let's not debate that it has been set to rest so you will mention that so wherever there is a judicial order you say judicial order if it is sub judice you say it's a sub judice if nothing is there then you follow the government of india views on the topic rather than going against it as i said don't take risks your aim is to extract maximum number of marks from that panel and once you get into the civil service yeah you can enjoy life and the first 5 years of civil service i can tell you they will make you or mar you as a civil servant many people after uh, you know getting into the service in the academies in the academies they just enjoy life they don't work hard they don't uh, write the papers well they they only uh, are involved in all the wrong things of life which are there now you will not do that i can assure you your reputation uh, uh, don't be uh, so much afraid of politician but be afraid of the senior officers they can make you or mar your career so you remember anything that you do the reputation spreads throughout the state and if a position will come he'll say are wo the highly indisciplined officer usko mat post karna wahan par this is how the thing spread out but if he is a good officer you have done in the first 5 years you have made your good reputation they will say oh that problem i think he can attend to that problem he is a very good task master and he is a go getter and he is a trouble shooter so your reputation in the cadre first 5 years is important after that you enjoy the entire life but don't uh, you know just to start we have you have entered the civil service now you can do anything that you can't do and particularly with the social media and uh, with uh, politicians also breathing down your neck and the judiciary also breathing down your neck you have to be extra careful about it okay any other questions yes Uh, sir, in most questions, we know only fifty to sixty percent of the answer. Mm. So, sir, initially we sound very underconfident, and so, sir, how should we tackle that? And should we skip the question altogether, or just say that I know this much? So, how should we move about that? My view is that if you know part of the answer, you should definitely uh, explain that answer. But remain uh, after that, you can say that this was the only thing which I knew. and if you do not know the answer then don't make a guess and please don't ask the panel can i make a guess it is never appreciated he will never say ki no no sir no no you are not supposed to make guess you have you know the only then you tell the answer so if you it sometimes you know ultimately it is also the luck which matters that in the first few question what kind of questions come to you but my view is that be supremely confident of whatever answer you are giving if you do not know the answer say so one or two or three answers if you do not know it is perfectly fine but ending that thing as i said your interview on a good note is important and therefore uh, i mean you see uh, the question which you raised is an important one but there are no neat solution to this all i can say is that just because you have made it to the to the interview now whatever time is left the interviews are going to start around 15th of january something like that continue for two months whatever time you have got don't take it lightly because ultimately the result is going to be depend tomorrow you should not lament the fact 
that if I had studied slightly more, probably I would have answered this particular question. So read as much as possible, but at the same time, it is the result which is not in your hand. The, the board which where you go is not in your hands. There are some very good boards, there are some average boards, you see. And uh, it depends on your luck because everything is done by the chairperson in the morning. Uh, it is at random. But, uh, but, but, but my view is that whatever you, if you have done your mains very well, uh, getting even 40%, 50% uh, marks in the interview will definitely you will get selected. One out of three will get selected, isn't it? There is one is to three or one is to 2.5. That is generally the ratio. So if you are uh, done your uh, hard work in the next uh, two months, I'm sure you will get selected. There is no doubt about it. And it may not be the one service. It may be uh, another service. But, uh, but, but, but don't uh, feel diffident because you have not been able to answer a question. And, uh, but uh, guessing would not be correct thing. But part of the answer would be a correct thing. But in case the interview has gone like that, and at the end of this, the chairman says that, uh, would you like me ask to ask any question? Then yes, you volunteer. Yes, this is my area. I would like to volunteer. That's, that's what I can say. But, uh, but believe me, believe me, the, the view board is generally very, very encouraging. They will never like to uh, discourage or put you down. Is it the first time you are appearing for an interview? Have no fear from the board. Board is going to be very, very uh, encouraging and also um, they would uh, be not be taking umbrage to any anything that you say. And uh, so uh, if supposing one of the member tries to be funny, the chairman will immediately intervene. And the chairman will say, no, let's leave it like that. So that uh, moderator part also the chairman plays very much. And, uh, and supposing someone uh, has been nasty in the, in, you know, so what happens is that it is not his or her wish that matters. It is the chairman ultimately along with other members who decide what marks are to be given to them. I hope uh, it, it, it answers your question because it's, it's not a very, uh, it's not a, doesn't have a very neat answer to that. All I can say is that whatever time is left, do try to study the, the knowledge. As I uh, told you, uh, now all of you who have got or are interested in the questions which are asked, I have got a, 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 a folder uh, which has got a large number of questions, the kind of questions which are asked. So those who uh, I, um, I will pass it on to the Vision IS and they can uh, always pass it on to you to have an understanding uh, of the questions related to economy and uh, COVID-19 and to the foreign policy. Now foreign policy of India vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other, other countries that also you must know. Sometimes we asked uh, what is democracy? What are the important elements of democracy? Uh, what are the international problems which we are facing? So the problems of uh, poverty, problem of drinking water, problem of COVID-19, and problem of AIDS, and uh, problem of migration. So you must know the international problems and the international institutions of United Nations. So uh, it, it has to be a very, very overhaul thing. And uh, the, the sample questions which can be asked at the interview, I have, uh, I have prepared over a period of time, which I would be too happy to do that. Any other question? Yes, sir. Hello. So firstly, thank you so much for providing such a good piece of information. I'm sure it will help us. Sir, I would like to ask you a question. Um, although it's a uh, sort of experience based, as you have experience, how do you look at a good and a bad, uh, not so good cadre? Cadres? Cadres. Okay. Yeah. It's only uh, the, the history, you know, uh, tells us why it is good or bad. Why good or bad is that uh, if the politicians uh, there are very encouraging, very supportive of the officers, that is one way of looking at it. And the public, whether they are uh, respectful of the officers or not, these are the factors which I uh, always incorporate in trying to find out. Uh, supposing the government of the day always tries to look at the officers with suspicion, so that is a bad cadre because uh, however how hard you may try and there are certain states 
um, the which uh, where the public men uh, as well as the politician they always look at the officers with great uh, mistrust and suspect so that is how i said good and bad cadre for example uh, a state which has long history uh, of uh, civil service um, like for example rajasthan or uh, punjab or even uttar pradesh uh, they are very good cadres cosmopolitan people from southern part of india they will get absorbed in the same fashion as the northern part of india but sometimes where the outsiders face problems they have the problems of uh, being termed as outsiders regionalism and uh, language problems the cultural problem the food problems which are there particularly for those who are from northern india going to the southern part so this is how i uh, wanted to distinguish good and bad cadres what is difference between confidence and over confidence how we can over <laughs> over overcome with over confidence i i i would only like to put it in this way that whenever you give answers it should be with all humility and uh, if you uh, think that you know better than the panel that is over confidence but my uh, view is that you uh, your aim is to extract as many marks as possible so try to be humble try to be respectful try to understand their view point and that is i would say is is the correct way, approach if someone uh, tries to brag or someone tries to make very long answers and uh, tries to show off that is overconfidence overconfidence uh, in the interview panel will never help confidence will help there is no such sharp line distinguishing between confidence and overconfidence but whatever makes the panelist feel bad about the candidate is overconfidence so try to make it so humble respectful that they feel good about it your aim is to ultimately win them over unko jeetna zaruri hai to isliye koi cheez aisi nahi hai ab jaise for example some people when i told the the girl candidates that try to wear a sari so some said ki why sir i can wear anything i said there is nothing wrong with that you can wear anything but supposing any member of that panel takes umbrage to this particular thing it is your loss nobody else's loss why do you want to anchor that loss why don't you wear it get good marks in that i am not at all trying to compromise your discipline in respect or your autonomy in respect of your dress or the same thing someone can wear dhoti kurta there is nothing wrong with that everyone has got freedom to do that but it may not it may someone will take umbrage to this and why do you want someone to take umbrage to it so therefore the purpose is that here it is not to show off everything it is only to come out with the answer good answers with humility and respectfulness for example some people will say why are you wearing this pink shirt so uh, he will say why shouldn't i wear a pink shirt now that's that's a, oh, it's a very bad answer so he'll say sir uh, and and uh, you don't answer that because i like it that also not a good answer you say sir pink uh, is 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 a color I, i i like because of this reason so give a justification to that at no matter of time should any member feel that you are and never be disparaging about women folk or the senior citizens or part by the schedule cars or schedule drive uh, because that is going to put off the the panelists you never know and similarly for example different people will be from different services never try to speak ill of any service you don't know the panel may be from an ips officer or an indian foreign service officer so you can't speak against that service also you can't speak against the army you can't speak against the engineers you have to be very balanced in your approach and you do not know who are going to sit there so therefore that is why i said it should be rational it should be uh, secular and it should be ethical so that is the answer at the end of the day you should feel happy that i have done very well but that if you have over confidence you will not have a good feeling because someone will be unnecessarily he may be brusque to you also or in the end you may not get a very good marks also why why should we get so it's a very thin line confidence it is just like self respect and ego ego and self respect there is a very thin line separating the two okay so 
just just be yourself and come out with the good answers good afternoon sir yes. thank you so much for the enlightening session so i have two questions yeah. first one when you mentioned the use of hands huh. i agree with your point i see it but uh, i ha i'm a commerce student i've studied communication as a in a professional manner and i'm also training to become an image image runner image coach so we are always taught that your hands are part of non verbal communication and i always use I use my hands a lot so uh, there's a dilemma that uh, i might i might be able to stop it but i don't uh, uh, i'm not convinced that why one should not use their hands so uh, your point is well taken and uh, many time in the interview we have to tell the candidate that uh, the world of government is totally different from the corporate world corporate world you can use the use of hands but in in uh, in when you are appearing at an interview for uh, civil services you will not use the hands even if you have to make a conscious effort about it because use of hands is like show off and nobody likes it you see the bureaucrats are very very conservative people so don't use the hands it will give an impression that we are being over serious which may be perfectly right in a corporate world but even if you have to make extra effort for that keep your hands on your thighs and with very little movement and use mostly verbal language or non verbal body language other parts of your body but not the hands this is my with very such humble suggestion to you always agreed sir another yeah. thing which happens is sometimes people have the habit of uh, <coughs> using slangs or such words which may be perfectly fine in a corporate world but may not be fine in in the government so avoid using those kinds of things for example words like guy now guy you don't use uh, in an interview may be perfectly fine in a, in a corporate world so here you have to be extra careful about use of very very so that's about it so i have one more question yeah. uh, in the story where you told about the ethical dilemma about the domestic violence story yes i particularly did not find any ethical dilemma in that because one point is i have to stand up for a lady who is being uh, tortured and uh, another side it's my career and i think uh, that uh, my career is not important than someone else's life so what should be my answer at that point obviously i don't want to spoil my interview also so what should i say in such situation yeah. so the important thing you have to remember here in this case is as a civil servant you have to give equal opportunity to both the parties okay so you will say that since she has made this allegation against her husband so i will discuss this matter with the collector separately in a room and i will say sir this is what she has said so therefore uh, would you like uh, that uh, you make amends so that such a thing does not happen in future or do you have totally different views about it he may have his own point of point whereas if you proceed just on what she has said that may or may not be correct in all cases it may be correct in some cases so you will use the principle of natural justice you will say i will pose this question separately to the collector saying that sir this has been made and therefore should it go outside unnecessarily would you like to make amends about it so that it does not go outside if supposing she says no 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 you have no right to do that yes after that you can go ahead you get a complaint and then you have to get a written complaint from the lady you have to send that written complaint to the police station you are not supposed to take action under the domestic violence act it is the police which is going to take so you will say yes ma'am i have i'll get an application from you in writing and i will send it for investigation to the police but before that my view is that why ethical dilemma comes because he is your boss also and therefore you would like and give an opportunity to the boss also whether he is right or wrong thank you so much what about that ethical dilemma which i asked you any one of you where the lady the wife of the collector of an adjoining district had come and she made the purchasing without making any payment to answer that yes so basically uh, legally because the collector asked me to accompany his wife right. so he is the agent in that contract mm. 
that's a verbal contract mm. and he should be liable uh, he should be answerable on that that because he asked me to accompany his wife and he should be accountable for payment also i would request him to consider the matter again and if he does not pay i would pay it for uh, myself yeah but supposing this thing happen in the future also how long will you keep on paying you see and uh, you you don't have uh, unlimited money to pay for them so your point of is correct that it is ultimately the collector who asked you but ultimately the other methods would be that if the collector has washed his hands off you will speak to the collector of your adjoining district and you will say sir uh, ma'am had come to make this purchasing and uh, unnecessarily it will lead to a bad reputation for you would you like to make the payment for that and i'm sure most of them will do <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> yes hum to baat kar lete hain kya karna hai nahi karna hai lekin uske baad kya karna hai sabse bada questions aata hai ek interview ke baad kyunki selection hua ki nahi hua uske baad thoda sa ho jata hai uh well, the stress will always be there but as i said you have done your best you see uh, bhagwan ne jab manav banaya na तो उन्होंने मानव को बहुत शक्तिमान बनाया उनको हर तरह के पावर दिए एवरी पावर वॉज गिवन टू द्यूमन बींग एक्सेप्ट सिक्स पावर्स विच ही सेट दैट दीज पावर्स आई विल कीप विथ माई सेल्फ ये ह्यूमन्स के हाथ में नहीं होगा और वो क्या था जीवन मरण जिंदा रहना या मरना कब कौन जिंदा होगा कब कौन मरेगा ये मेरे हाथ में है ये मानव नहीं डिसाइड करेगा कि मैं कब पैदा हूँ कब मरूँगा जीवन मरण यश अपयश और लाभ हानि तो ये जो लाभ होगा कि नहीं होगा मुझको ये आपके हाथ में नहीं है इट इज इन देंड्स ऑफ दैट ऑल माई टी ऑल यट यू कैन डू इज दैट टूमोरो यू शुड नॉट रिपेंट दिस फैक्ट कि इफ आई हैड वर्क स्लाइटली मोर हार्ड आई वुड हैव डन दैट एंड एज आई सेड फॉर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ योर सिविल सर्विस रिक्वायर्स एट प्लस एट प्लस एट एट आवर्स ऑफ स्लीप एट आवर्स ऑफ प्रिपरेशन and 8 hours you devote to other things you have to play games uh, devote uh, time towards your physical fitness your mental fitness your spiritual fitness looking after your other stakeholders your parents your grandparents your friends your hobbies so therefore you have must divide the entire thing into uh, these factors so work life balance kind of thing must be maintained once you have done that don't have stress and always believe in this thing that if something does not come to you in the first instance there must be some very strong reasons which will be for your better shayad behtar ke liye hi hoga agli bar ho sakta hai aapko jo hai is bar shayad wo service na mil pati jo aap chahte the agli bar aapko mil jayegi to yes uh, if that positivity as i said attitude mein positivity aani zaruri hai stress ko manage karne ke liye main jisko main karta hu wo ye hai ki good you must hit the gym every day do exercise every day without fail do some meditation every day and also read lot of books improve your knowledge improve your skills and attitude so if you do that uh, i'm sure the stress will come down humor hai movies hai games hai talking to your friends hai these always you know i'm sure all of you must have done lot uh, study on the emotional intelligence in your gs4 paper उसके अंदर भी आपने देखा होगा कि इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस को इम्प्रूव करने के लिए दीज आर द मेथड्स दैट यू यू आल्सो डिवोट लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू अदर थिंग्स एंड लुक एट अदर्स व्यू पॉइंट आल्सो ट्राई टू इम्प्रूव द रिलेशनशिप्स बिकॉज हिंदी में कहावत है ना कि पद कद और मद इनका कोई महत्व नहीं है पद मीन्स योर पोजिशन कद मीन्स टेचर एंड मद मीन्स हाउ बैक बैलेंस पद कद और मद का कोई महत्व नहीं है संबंधों का महत्व है relationships matter your relationship with your parents with your brother your sister your domestic servant your driver your sub subordinates your colleagues your neighbors your distant relations that matters so establish good relationships they are your biggest bank balance and uh, devote time to that that will bring down the stress okay sir i want to ask a question acha sir here. okay yes sir sir i am from bihar and sir recently the caste caste survey has been conducted by the state government mm. so sir there is a difference in opinion about uh, in this topic of the central government and the state government mm. 
the state government suggests that it is for the beneficial for the communities that's why we are doing but this can also lead to sir politicization of caste which is prevalent in the bihar so what extent should i take if the if the opinion has been asked by the board members so again you will say balance your judgment you will say these are the positive things these are the negative things negative things you say that it may lead to regionalism casteism and uh, 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 hatred amongst the different castes and so on but positive things it will give us an idea which are the disadvantaged sectors of the society caste wise for which special programs and schemes can be framed so that they can be uplifted so you will balance your judgment dono mein acha hi hai acha hi bhi hai burai bhi hai and you say that the caste census should not be rejected outrightly as such it will definitely yield to better uh, uh, you know schemes and programs you see nowadays the public policy which we are framing it nowadays more attention is being paid to something called as evidence based public policy you must have read evidence based public policy because public money is scarce you can't fritter away with money and you have to frame the policies keeping in view the evidence facts figures and how will you get the facts and figures only through the surveys only through data so therefore this for formulation of sound public policies you require such surveys and data and caste survey is also one of them if it is denied by like uh, a central government if they are not in favor of the state government's decisions mm. then what is stand sir then i took should i support the state government or central government so you say that a rational person has to take understand both the pros and cons don't side with any particular government here in this case you say you give the balance view and supposing they say ki what is your view about it ye bhi pooch sakte hai na so you say uh, what is your view i mean let me ask you actually sir i also have uh, uh, think ki there is pros and cons pros means ki yes it is uh, very much well for the policy formulation those who are the weaker section so you give an example of atomic energy you okay. say atomic energy can always yield to the welfare of the people also as well as it can be destructive also so give an example if you use it in health and other factors then uh, uh, the technology is very very helpful if you use it for destructive purposes another so everyone has got two facets this is how you will diplomatically you will be able to meet the answer sir if you uh, answer partially in hindi in an english panel so has it lead to bad marks or don't do, uh, don't do that don't do don't do that I, it should be either in hindi or in english okay. don't mix the two okay the panel must know in which language you are going to speak my my suggestion to you would be that whatever medium you give you speak in that language yes technical words you can always use english words there is nothing wrong with that but if you make one paragraph in hindi and one in english it has a very jarring effect i would my strongly suggest restrict to only one particular language but technical words yes you can use english words yes sir uh say i'm answering in english because that's my medium uh, but uh, i have to use a line by say a poet say i'm quoting sahir so, uh, but that i cannot translate in english so can i use that uh one one or one or two words in hindi is fine but i'm saying the answer should not be mm. given uh, you know in in a different language mm. one or two words is fine mm. just like technical words you can uh, which is that thing which you were trying to say uh i was just saying say i am using a line that sahir ludhiani we wrote some day he huh. wrote in hindi and huh. i cannot so there it's a couplet mm -hmm. so couplet yes it has to be in that particular language it's fine but don't be uh, a shayar there thank you <laughs> don't be matlab it may be it may go in favor also it may go against also you know, just to support my argument say so uh -huh, but but, but uh, it's, it's a dicey thing you can say that sometimes uh, you can use humor also sometimes you can do a couplet or shayari also but uh, as i said it's a very serious business but at the same time i would also mention smile occasionally don't be a glum faced or a poker faced you must smile you know once or twice during the interview so that it gives an a favorable impression so couplet keh sakte hain lekin thoda sa relevant honi chahiye ek to bahut relevant honi chahiye 
it must be relevant to the question which has been asked and then uh, be slightly you see humor is a very good thing but you know humor is a very serious thing also because when you crack a joke people should laugh also na agar hase hi na to fir us joke ki value nahi rehti na so that's what i'm saying uh, i i don't see any question coming from this lot <laughs> just uh, you know i remember a quote that it is good to be a good listener but sometimes asking question is good if you want to learn more when you have such a personality in front of you and i remember a quote also curiosity is the wick in the candle of learning so be curious ask questions i see no questions from this side so, okay so just ask some questions write it down i mean when we were preparing we had a lot of questions small ki sir main enter kar rahi hu let's say in the, in front of the board member to mujhe idhar dekhna hai kaise kisko pehle namaste karna hai ya greet kaise karna hai so even the silly question can be important just yeah. ask small questions like mujhe bolna pade ki acha pehle you take that question or i will take that question right just, yeah go ahead <laughs> it's not i was thinking no question from the middle yeah hello sir uh, thank you for the session sir in the session you mentioned a point where you talked about you can keep the tempo low in the beginning and then take it further okay. sir i want you to substantiate on it and what possible ways or scenarios can be in the boardroom where i should be mindful of the of the same yeah uh, uh, why i said was that uh, uh, in the beginning uh, the impression should not be uh, such that uh, that you are trying to show off you should be uh, very humble in the beginning uh, slow and then you can come full fledged that is uh, uh, basically saying that once you have got acclimatized to the thing once you have established a good relationship with the panel then you can go whole hog but initially don't try to be informal don't try to give very long answers because that will put off the panelists that is what i'm only uh, trying to say because initial 5 minutes they do matter and the last 5 minutes they do matter in, in any report you know there are three parts to a report one is introduction then the body and the conclusion so introduction and the conclusion they are the most important so the first introduction Uh, give that impression to the that you have knowledge but you are very very uh, uh, you know respectful you are uh, you are not trying to be uh, show off that is what i was saying that instead of uh, going whole hog in the beginning itself it may unnecessarily create a wrong impression that's what i'm saying good afternoon sir yes sir sir, sir uh, you, you talked about like it is getting tough now the exam and the first interview we are facing is sometimes the fifth attempt or even the sixth attempt so how do we tackle that because it becomes a point of nervousness when we sit in interview for in our fifth attempt or sixth attempt so does it matter to that extent that we get nervous about it and if the question is asked about the time taken in the preparation so what is the best way to tackle such questions first of all let me tell you the panelist does not have any record of your previous interviews they don't know what how many marks you have got in the previous interview so it does not affect them at all what affect them is the performance then and there and uh, my own view is that uh, it should not affect you also though it sometimes acts as a dampener because you have appeared four or five times and uh, it is this so it may appear but uh, the only thing is that uh, Uh, it sometimes the luck matters which board you have got into and how things have started off uh, if it has started off on a bad note then sometimes it leads to a bad note but there are no hard and fast uh, you know rules which can say how to tackle a situation when you have come for the fifth time or the sixth time all i can say is that you gain lot of experience by having appeared in the previous times and you must try to improve the mistakes that you might have committed in the previous uh, times but other than that the only thing which i uh, as i told you was that uh, try to read as much as possible and communication skills But basically uh, uh, this is what exactly uh, what exactly is the in the question intent of the question which you wanted to ask uh, itself in the interview comes in fourth and fifth attempt so is uh, so the one question is that uh, 
does it matter how long you take like we, are you taking 6 years to come to the first like interview they do ask this question yes sir that uh, that's uh, so what have you done in between interregnum period what were you doing there after doing your bsc or doing your engineering uh, where were you why did you leave it at that so there uh, some diplomatic reply can be given is that i was preparing for the civil services or something happened in the family uh, which uh, actually uh, diverted my attention to that but then uh, after having come back from them now i have started and as far as uh, number of attempts is concerned nobody is going to ask that embarrassing question that uh, you have taken so many attempts um the the because uh, first of all they don't discourage you and uh, you can say that uh, the the law of the land allows me opportunities so many opportunities to appear so i want to finish off all my chances which i have got for and i'm passionate about civil services so this is how you will answer that thing good afternoon sir sir in my case i graduated in 2020 and my first attempt was in 22 so i had a two year term between my graduation and my first attempt the common question that arises is why did i not go for a masters degree in those two years i was full time preparing but how can we answer that uh, do you think they will ask you why did you not go for masters degree so i kind of did but i dropped out of it so i think should i mention it to them or should i just drop it off no i am uh, no 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 I'll believe in one principle all of you less is more you will speak only that much which you are spoken to you will not divulge more than what is necessary jitna avashyak hai need to know basis batana hai if they ask you then only you will tell now question is they will never ask you ki why did you not do your post graduation because for appearing at the civil services you don't require a post graduation you only require a graduation so you can you can say uh, so many things that i was doing this particular thing during the last two years or i was preparing for that or i appeared at other competitive examinations but uh, nobody is going to ask this particular question but uh, as i said that uh, the, the don't volunteer to give information to the panelists it's only <laughs> what you are asked because that may unnecessarily lead you to another uncomfortable zone where uh, you will get trapped why do you want to do that uh good afternoon sir yes yes sir uh thank you for enlightening us uh sir my question is when there is an issue where the court and government is on opposite side and the classic case is the collegium system so what should be the students approach to answer this question and one more question sir i ask uh when there is a certain uh, topics like certain government decisions like renaming of places mm. so if the interviewer would ask is it necessary steps mm. so what should be the approach of a student to answer this question thank <clears throat> you so again uh, as i said that every question uh, has got two facets to it so this particular thing about collegium uh, system whether it has worked satisfactorily or not the government's view point is that the collegium system is not working well and that is why they brought in uh, an act now so you will first of all state that there are many reasons which the government feels with which i agree that in order to make it more transparent the system should be such that uh, it is not only one uh, particular uh, institution which decides the the selection of judges it should be a much uh, larger uh, group of people but you say at the same time that as on today that law was struck down which was framed by the government so right now the collegium system stands it is the system which stands but it has got its own shortcomings and therefore you will tend to tilt in favor of the government by saying that uh, the collegium system has been tested over so many years and the government has found many uh, shortcomings in that and that is why they has chosen to remove those shortcomings by having a much larger uh, uh, you know group of people to decide that thing and with which i agree you will not go against the government short and simple because right now there is no such thing which is going to cause contempt of court the law is there collegium stands 
but when a view is asked you see so uh, so you will say that the collegium's view is this that this is something which uh, will create problem in the future some political party may use it to their advantage so then you say having said that but the there has been uh, many allegations that uh, the relations uh, have been uh, you know chosen as judges and uh, many uh, many people who were otherwise deserving they were left by the collegium so there are uh, points in favor as well as against so rather than committing yourself to any particular thing again i would say that mention the positive and negative of collegium system mention the positive and negative of the new system which was proposed by the government but say that that law has been totally that may abrogated so that law no, no longer stands so now the government will have to bring about a new law to circumvent the collegium system because supposing you say in favor of collegium system then what will happen that the a man panel member may ask that uh, over a period of time collegium system has not been found to be a very sound system it has led to many ills in the society so therefore Uh, don't you think that uh, the government's view was correct so another person may say that uh, don't you think that it is liable to political uh, pressures in case it is left to the political uh, leadership so therefore it is it is both ways it is it is difficult for you so you have to uh, come out with a uh, you know central approach by mentioning the positive and negative of both the sy systems but at the same time if at all you have to give your views because they will ask you acha theek hai apne mein bhi bataiye aapka kya view hai my suggestion would be that you go in favor of the government you say yes there is a need to bring about changes in the system governing appointment of judges to the higher judiciary are you convinced or not don't go against the government so names you write uh, say that uh, again there are two ways one thing is that if some name uh, has got a large amount of uh, you know people are very attached to that name there is a historical background there is a cultural background and people genuinely feel so the local populace what do they feel about it if they feel that this particular original name should be restored there is nothing wrong in restoring the name but at the same time mention restoration of that is changing the names entails huge expenditure and inconvenience on the people because everywhere you have to change the name you know one changing of name entails expenditure of 200 to 300 crores of rupees allahabad se uh, prayagraj ka naam change karne mein kam se kam 200 300 so crore rupaya kharch hua hai because everywhere you have to change the names so you say that changing the names of a place if it has got people sentiments uh, and views attached to that there is no harm in that but at the same time one must be prepared for this fact that changing will lead to lot of inconvenience it will take time and it will entail government expenditure also so that's how you will do that sometimes you can say that it was associated with the britishers so it was colonial uh, system which they and i think now that we have we are a democratic country for the last 75 years we should switch back to the original names so therefore there is nothing wrong with that because if you say there is a wrong with that something then again you will be unnecessarily you know trampling on the foot of some panelist who may be very pro government and in any case upsc members would be a majority of them would be very pro government only a few of them will be maybe um, uh, generally the such people may or may not be called also Sir, uh, sir, uh, there are certain questions uh, like, uh, have you ever been part of corruption or have you come across any instance of corruption in your life? Mm -hmm. uh, so, sir, usually we say yes because uh, most of us have seen bribery uh, taking place in and around us. So, sir, they usually say, "Ki, what were your steps? What did you do in that case?" So, how to answer these questions, sir? So, uh, <clears throat> so let me narrate to you a real story. since you have mentioned this thing uh, there was a person and it's a real story he was a student in a college and uh, 
ही यूज टू पिक अप बुक्स फ्रॉम द लाइब्रेरी कभी होता है ना कमीज के अंदर रख के ले आना या पन्ना फाड़ लेना उसके अंदर से वो रख लेना अपने पास ही यूज टू डू दैट एंड इन दिस वे ही ब्रॉट डजेंस ऑफ बुक्स फ्रॉम द लाइब्रेरी वन डे हिज इनर वॉयस अंतरात्मा की आवाज द कॉन्शियंस सडनली स्टार्टेड प्रिकिंग हिम कि वाई वॉट आर माई डूइंग आई एम डिप्राइविंग अदर मेंबर्स ऑफ माई कम्युनिटी टू द बेनिफिट ऑफ दोज बुक्स बाई स्टीलिंग दोज बुक्स and then it became so heavy a burden one day that boy he went to meet the headmaster and he said sir i have been stealing books from your library for the last so many years but now it had become too much of a burden i could not wait any longer and i have come with these books to return to you so the headmaster looked at him and he said are you willing to accept this guilt before the entire assembly of the students tomorrow morning at the prayer time that was too much him is facing humiliation before all your colleagues so that boy thought for a while it was a great risk but he decided he will take it he said i will do that next day at the prayer time the headmaster told the assembly of students that the boy has got something to say to you and he came in front and he accepted the this fact that he had been stealing the books and he said i feel ashamed about it i am very sorry about it after that thing everyone started shunning him leaving him uske sang koi baat cheet nahi kare he was left alone even the best of the friends stopped talking to him and he felt very miserable about it ki maine to ye kiya uska dekho ye natija nikla hai two days passed and then that headmaster sent a message to this boy to meet him in the office again and he went there fearing that probably he is going to issue the order of rustication and he went inside and with shaking legs he said sir you had called me and the headmaster looked at him and he said look behind me behind him there were about 100 books which were lying on the almira and he see he said after you had admitted your guilt 15 boys and girls came and they returned their books also which they had picked up from the library you should feel great pride in the fact that you were able to change other people also you have become a change agent he felt very happy about it because that is how this is small act sometimes changes the lives of other people and then he became a bank manager he got a job in a bank and he decided to change the lives of people in that village who were under the debt of the money lenders and he dis- decided to get them rid of the money lenders by advancing them loans for their uh, productive activities and that was then filmed into a beautiful film and uh, banking for change if you open up youtube you will find banking for change that is the example so here the question when you ask this question that have you made any uh, have you uh, stolen anything or committed any unethical activity yes if it is a petty activity you might have committed it's there is nothing wrong in that but you can say that after a while my conscience started weighing on this and pricking me and therefore i decided to make amends that is how you will do that good afternoon sir so actually i am not the real candidate who will be appearing for the interview but it's my brother so he was not feeling well since last 2 3 days so he asked me to go and jot sure. down all the important points sure. because he was very much eager to attend your session sir his question is little personal so he asked me to ask in the last of the session sir last year he appeared for the interview and despite having good marks in the mains he just missed the cut off the final cut off by hardly very few marks so after the in- interview he just cross checked what where things went wrong then sir he found that despite giving all the answers and also confidently 
he is just able to secure the very mediocre and the average marks. But on the on the other side, his friend who was literally crying after giving the interview, and he scored literally 22, 25 marks more than him. And the the friend of my brother who was saying that it, he was crying literally, he was saying that that was one of his worst interview that he has given in his life ever. And so what is one fact is clear from this incident that knowledge is not the sole criteria to get selected. So what is the, some other secretly things the interview panel check about the candidate? Sir, this you are the most prone person, so that made me ask this question, sir. So it's said the over, overall uh, performance at the candidate of the candidate. It is not necessarily knowledge because knowledge is mostly uh, got from the mains itself. But yes, knowledge about the current affairs is something which they definitely must prepare very well. For example, if uh, artificial intelligence or uh, Ukraine Russia war. So such kind of things, one must prepare it very well. So current affair, domestic and international, you must know very well. A large number of questions will be on the current affairs. And then there will be many questions on the economy of the country. So prepare that economy of the country. And then ethical dilemmas. And then uh, the other questions will be relating to the state to which you belong, as well as the, the degree uh, which you have uh, earned, so the subject which you have undertaken. But uh, now coming to the other aspect, this is about knowledge. But uh, your overall way of answering the question, the confidence that you have got, the if you are vague in your answers or you change your uh, viewpoint again and again, that will show you uh, as a person, uh, as a person of uh, wavering mind. So you have to stick to your viewpoint, be succinct, clear, simple, good answers, ethical, rational, and secular answers is all that I can say. Uh, I, I know sometimes it feels very bad when you don't secure good marks at the end. But it also depends to some extent on the board also, constitution. So sometimes we have a good board, sometimes we have a not a so good board. And uh, the type of questions which are asked, there is no such uh, as such formula for that. But uh, again, it is relative. So sometimes people may not get very good uh, marks in interview, but uh, means they have done well so they can secure. So I, I always try to say that uh, uh, prelims is dicey. Interview is something which uh, may or may not be always very, but mains is something which is definitely under your control. You should write mains so that you get maximum number of marks. But interview, if you are your usual self, and if you have given uh, your time to the particularly the, the the public policies framed by the government because lot many questions come on public policies so the government's uh, view on uh, the women children senior citizens employment the problem facing this country the democracy in this country and uh, they may ask you questions like the indicators the human index indicators and uh, other indicators like poverty indicators, the sustainable development goals, the millennium development goals. So one must have a knowledge about the domestic affairs and international affairs and economy of this country. If you prepare that well, then majority of the questions you will be able to answer. And uh, if you don't, if you are not very, very extreme, if you are extreme, you will have problem. But if you are not very extreme, you have a balanced uh, answer. I don't think you get normally less than 50% marks. Yes. So the irony is that, sir, he has appeared in many of the mock interviews just before two, three days be before the actual interview. And there he scored nearly very good marks, nearly about 190. But in the real interview, he got in 160s only. And he said that the in the mock interviews, there were very, very factual questions and very difficult to tackle. But in the real interview, it was very general, and he was able to tackle them very easily and happily. And that overall, and there was an engaging environment. But we don't know but why we got so much of the less marks, despite having all the good answers confidently. So there was some dilemma that what other things they check along with their knowledge and etc. Because sir, within two, yeah, three days, happens. there it will happens. not be a drastic change in the personality because if one is scoring mm -hmm. nearly 190 marks in the MOOC and in the real interview after two, three days, they are getting 160, 
when something is different from these so, so first of all mock interviews we never give marks uh, i don't know how which uh, mock interview he got marks sir i should not mention the name but ah, the don't mention it okay but normally in mock interviews we only tell what are the positive points what are the negative points where one can improve upon and the people have been asking me as the chairperson of mock interview and i never gave them marks i said no it is not correct to give marks so uh, so that is what actually discourages the person because he got 190 marks in the mock interview and then he got 160 marks but anyway having said that um, uh, it is it it is ultimately you really can't uh, say anything about it but uh, there is always a band uh, you will get minimum this much and maximum that normally the band operates and it depends on the luck but again i would i would say that uh, you should leave certain things to the almighty also uh, everything is not in your hand but you just prepare well but prepare well on the topics as i told you that i have got a, a huge collection of uh, questions which uh, generally they are asked so uh, if you go through those uh, kind of questions you will be in a position to answer a large number of uh, such things and, and maybe next interview and then uh, you can uh, always come with a very happy face that you have got much greater marks in that so let's hope so for the best sir as you pointed out that we should avoid giving too many mocks so yes. is, is is there like any ideal number the <laughs> <laughs> if, if if we can have and another question related to that sir a lot of candidate they try to crunch a lot of mocks just before the uh, interview and some of them avoid giving interviews at the last leg of uh, like the interview preparation so what is the ideal way of doing the if mocks, you can mock interview yes yes my uh, many, my view is that 3 4 mocks is okay but some people give a dozen mocks i have seen and that creates a very conflicting situation they get confused in that 3 4 mocks is fine and that also should be given by understanding uh, the the level of the institution because there are some fly by night operators also in this academic field and uh, just like people write books also without having a very good knowledge about it so try to restrict yourself only to a few marks reputation wise the good institution secondly uh, don't give marks before uh, the last date so it should be away from that Uh, because last day preparation will unnecessarily uh, change it will create lot of confusion so you should have time to balance out the entire thing so about a week before the interview i think you should just prepare on yourself uh, i when i appeared there were never mocks there were no such thing like that there were very few training institutes either probably there was only one or two training centers i never attended any one of them i did everything at my home only and uh, still got reasonably good marks got 40th position in india improved that position to 13th position uh, through examination at the academy some people uh, don't take uh, don't do labor at the time of uh, your uh, academy training those marks are also added at least in those times they were added i do not know whether they are added nowadays and that have the effect of improving your position also so i was in a position to improve the my position from 40th in the country to 13th in the country and that matters when it comes to the tops appointments then your seniority all india level also matters <coughs> so any other uh, yes uh sir my name is aradhna and uh, sir according to my official certificate i am 24 year or right now but my according to real certificate that is uh issued through hospitals i am 21 year old so uh, i am confused when the in the final interview panel in the in the final interview when the panel will ask which uh, date of birth should i tell and uh, i th i think that i should tell the my official uh, date of birth 
बट एट द टाइम आई डोंट नो वाई आई फील अ बीट आन एथिकल सो विच वाट शुड बी माई एंसर देयर सो वॉट इज एज पर योर द प्रोस्पेक्ट द फॉर्म विच यू हैव फिल्ड अप वॉट इज द प्रूफ दैट यू हैव अटैच इज इट योर डेट ऑफ बर्थ फ्रॉम द हॉस्पिटल और इज इट फ्रॉम योर एजुकेशनल आई थिंक इट शुड बी एजुकेशनल टेंथ और टेंथ प्लस टू सर यस सर इन एवरी ऑफिशियल डॉक्यूमेंट आधार कार्ड टेन टूल्व ग्रेजुएशन माई ऑफिशियल डेट ऑफ बर्थ इज टेन फोर टू थाउजेंड बट इन रियल इट इज ट्वेंटी इलेवन टू थाउजेंड टू थाउजेंड टू सो आई एम कन्फ्यूज शुड बी सो द थिंग शुड बी लाइक दिस दैट यू शुड टेल ओनली द सर्टिफिकेट एज विच इज योर कॉलेज और स्कूल दैट इज द ऑफिशियल डॉक्यूमेंट and once you enter the civil service then you can always uh, give an application giving that it was wrongly recorded and i should be given 2 years benefit also but sir i feel a bit unethical to tell lie because it is a lie so but that is that but you have attached that certificate to your form na sir i tried to uh, correct it uh, like as my real date of birth that is 2002 but it didn't uh, so uh what so the i so do? i think what you have done is correct it is nothing unethical about it and later on when you will join the civil service you can make an attempt to change the get the date change so i should tell finally the official date of birth thank you sir thank you sir for such an enriching points and i'm sure these insightful points will help students a lot uh i had taken away some notes out of the entire session which uh, you know made the like highest impact on my mind and that was kad pad mad important nahi hai social relations bahut zyada matter karte hain so start learning to create a cohesive social relations and that will be uh, really helping you a lot when you get selected i think emotional intelligence is the point which we should take away and um, sir ne ek aur bahut achhi baat kahi thi life is not hunky dory you have to be strong learn from mistakes and move forward wear that uh, nike shoes and run faster okay. so <laughs> with this note i would like uh, to uh, say thanks to everyone and to sir for such an enriching session thank you so so uh, god speed to all of you may you all progress in life all of you have made it those who have come who are about to make it next year my best wishes to all of you uh, those who have reached the interview stage i am sure you would definitely make it to the final stage also it may be service a or service b but then ultimately you will be the future civil servants of this country and the world is very small we will meet sometime somewhere and then we will probably re we relive our experiences that we had today thank you very much